Hello everyone, I'm Jess. I'm the founder of Black Travelers Network and I wanted to come on and do a very quick live to kind of bring awareness to what's really going on here in Texas. Uh, there's a lot of uh, news reports uh, that's talking about the really bad weather that we're having here in Texas and that is true. We do have uh, very high temperature, I'm sorry, very low temperatures uh, here in Texas to the point where, you know, we're experiencing what feels like negative uh, degree weather. As you can see, I have on like my winter coat. Um, I have on a hoodie underneath. I have on like two layers of clothing. Um, and then on the bottom, I have on a couple pairs of socks. I have on uh, some uh, some thermal tights. Like this is how I have to go to sleep at night because, well, at, at, asleep at night, asleep in the day, because even for me, um, what's happening uh, that a lot of people are not aware of if you're not in Texas is that the energy companies, one of which is uh, on OnStar, I'm sorry, one of which is Encore, um, they are in fact controlling uh, when people have power and when they don't have power. What there's, they started off by saying is that they would start cutting uh, the power every 15 to maybe 45 minutes and so they would do something like a rotating kind of schedule where you may have power for you know 45 minutes and then they'll shut it off and then you'll have power uh, for uh, again for another 45 minutes short term type of thing but what's happened is it's been very, very extended. Some people haven't had power for 24 hours. Some some of us who are lucky to get power, we may get power for maybe like, um, I don't know, maybe like an hour to two hours tops, and then you'll go six to eight hours without any power. The energy companies are not updating any of us in terms of when we can expect to have power. Um, so that's another big deal. Um, and there's a big issue because a lot of the wealthier neighborhoods like Highland Park, which is in Dallas, and also uh, uh, there's another um, area that's uh, Preston Hollow that's also close to that area. Oftentimes people say that that's like the Beverly Hills of, uh, of Dallas or the Beverly Hills of Texas. And those, uh, those are areas where, um, well, former President uh, George Bush, he actually lives in Highland Park. These are areas that have not experienced uh, any type of power outage at all. Uh, there's also lots of uh, folks who are are noticing that the the lights at the car dealerships, the the skyline lights are uh, on. There's a lot going on at this particular moment in time, uh, and so I just want to make people aware that um, what you're hearing on the news is part of the story. Yes, uh, it is a big deal uh, because of the low temperatures. But there are what's supposed to be controlled blackouts happening, and unfortunately, not everyone is um, is is getting power. There are people who are going, uh, you know, long periods of time. You know, some people have uh, elderly uh, uh, elderly um, men and women in their home. Some people are on hospice. People have infants. Like there are a lot of different factors that people are having to manage. One uh, person complained because a whole dialysis facility has no power at all. And that's actually something that was not supposed to happen. Like all of the critical care facilities are supposed to have uh, electricity and power. The other interesting thing, yes, hi Mala, hi Nef uh, Nefertari. Uh, uh, Nefertari says some in Houston and Austin uh, uh, it's the same in Houston and Austin and uh, it is very disappointing I agree with you and Mala uh, uh, says downtown Houston has power no outages here yes you're very fortunate because um, here in the Dallas Fort Worth area there are people who who just have gone 31 hours plus with no power and so I wanted to just kind of do a quick live to make sure that people are aware it's a twofold problem now what we're running into is for folks who are actually go able to go out to the grocery stores there are long lines at the grocery stores that's literally wrapped around the buildings people are standing outside in the snow um, so there's very little 
food actually in the grocery stores. Um, there's no no way for people to, to get anything delivered uh, to their homes. So you're, you're dealing with having to manage uh, a crisis. There was not proper um, preparation. In fact, uh, the the statements that were issued to us was the outages are going to last longer than what was expected, so be prepared. And of course, be prepared after all of the power was shut off. So it's kind of hard for people to prepare for something after things have already kind of happened. And so um, I think that if folks would have been prepared to, to experience longer uh, power outages um, that they could have better prepared in terms of the types of foods that they bought because people actually did go to the stores to buy food but people kind of bought the wrong foods like they bought foods that they would be able to to, to cook <laughs> and when you don't have any power you know it, it's just I mean you can't cook anything and so um, Mala says this is t uh, this is typical to Texas issues. I agree. You know, it's so interesting because I've stayed in uh, Chicago. I've lived in Chicago, Illinois. I've lived in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. I've also lived in Baltimore, Maryland. Um, you know, it, Philadelphia. Like I've lived a lot of different places in my lifetime. Uh, also um, in Columbus, Ohio. Uh, you know, never <laughs> have I ever experienced anything to this level what's compounding the problem are are the forced power outages and they call them rolling blackouts but these are not rolling blackouts you know a rolling blackout it, some people are experiencing it where you'll have a short time where you have power and then they'll shut it and then they'll turn it back on so for 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 where I'm located because I'm located in the southern part of Dallas in in my particular area we've gotten like up to up to two hours at the most and and then we'll go uh, like several more hours without power um, but you know when this is gonna end they they won't tell us so we don't we don't really know so we just I just wanted to bring attention to this issue and I think the flip side of it is this because you know I in, in my time have done a number of different things to try to help prepare uh, a lot of our people um, for conditions like this for me personally I can speak only to my personal life because I've spent the vast majority of my personal life um, you know building my career and traveling throughout the country and eventually traveling throughout the world and during the global pandemic this is the longest time I've ever <laughs> been uh, in one place um, for an extended period of time uh, and, and probably in probably close to 20 years, I have not been in one place uh, for this long. And so for me, um, you know, I rely on a lot of the people uh, who who are in my family. And, you know, we really do work together through through certain situations like this. And one of the things that I, I talked about, uh, I would say at least, at least six years ago with my family, is the importance of getting a generator, the importance of uh, having dried foods uh, available. Um, and these are things you get when you, um, you know, these are things that you should automatically have as a part of just things you naturally have in your home. We've been able to get by um, on just like some things we just so happen to have in our homes. But I, I worked many years ago when I was actually on the road and talking to my family about the importance of having backup generators and like making that a priority in terms of investment. Folks didn't listen to me. So you know what? We're, we're in the situation that we're in. I'm fine. I can. It doesn't bother me because I've I've lived in other places. I've I've visited other places. So this isn't uh, really a huge inconvenience for me. But for people who are not accustomed to experiencing life like this, this is kind of a big deal. And um, Mala is saying they are never prepared for natural disasters. Yes, it's it is sad to see the politicians are not doing their job. 
Um, yes, Mala says she stay, stays ready. She has a barbecue pit so she can cook meals. Uh, it has never failed her. Exactly. We have to, As I feel like more than ever as black people in this country, we have to think about disaster preparedness. We have to start thinking about what are some of the things that makes the most sense to buy, that makes the most sense to purchase and keep in our homes. And so like for me, I, I'm sharing just a personal story about how my family did not listen you know also i'll say this and this is another interesting thing about five years ago i met with uh some teachers in the dallas fort worth area because what we were doing is we were actually working uh to prepare uh our teachers uh to to do an online program uh it was a small investment that they they had to make but we did like a free event where we you know provide teachers with food we talked about education and the importance of them taking what they have um what taking what they do every single a day in the classroom and putting it online uh, and at the end of the at the end of our workshops we asked the teachers like how many people want to how many of you teachers in uh, in DFW want to be a part of this uh, online training where we literally train you through Black Travelers Network to take your uh, the, the, your knowledge and information online and none of the teachers signed up to be a part of this and here we are 2020 where all of this stuff <laughs> has to go online and this is th these are things that we were talking about in Black Travelers Network like five plus years ago before the the pandemic ever happened you know what I'm saying so I, I say this to say um, you know it's important as, as, as black folks that we have a a mindset where we're thinking ahead and we're forward thinking uh, and 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 really doing what we need to do to prepare ourselves in order to um, to, to be able to to handle situations like this that could arise you know I always say like I tell these I tell people all these things and folks don't listen but you know not listening is not a bad thing too it just means that you know folks have to learn uh, from experience and so hopefully it is my hope that this experience teaches people a lot um, I know that all the things that I was personally uh, preaching to like my family and even among folks in uh, Black Travelers Network folks are now um, uh, uh, hopefully they're watching now. Uh, hey, Tiffany. Tiffany's saying it looks like I'm freezing. I am freezing. It is so cold. It's probably like 50 degrees in the house and that's up from like 39 degrees in the house. You know, it's so uh, for a very short time. Um, and, but I did want to come on and share what's actually really going on here in Dallas, Texas. And yes, Mala, you're right. Think ahead. Uh, we have to think ahead of time. We cannot depend on others. We got. Uh, we have to rely on our own uh, common sense, not wait for someone to, uh, to save us. Save yourself and your family. I agree. And that's another thing I wanted to point out that I find to be very interesting. The local officials here in Dallas are telling people, if you have power and you're willing to take people in, you should take them in. And it's like, but aren't we in the middle of a pandemic? Like, how are you recommending that people open their doors to folks they don't know, you know, when... <laughs> we're supposed to be social distancing. So it's a lot of mixed messages going on here. There's a lot of um, just a lot of uh, double talk. <laughs> uh, so I just wanted to make sure. Um, yes, I'm good. Thank you so much uh, for, for uh, joining the live. I just wanted to like, you know, tell the truth about what's really going on. And also, I wanted to make sure that, you know, folks can walk away with some real steps in terms of what uh, you can be doing wherever you are in this country. Stock up on, always keep some, some firewood handy. Um, we're out of firewood in, in all of Dallas. Keep firewood handy. And if you can't keep firewood handy, you know, a lot of times the neighbors, you know, who get like their, their lawns cut or, you know, their, their trees shaved, they, they will have bits of fire, I mean, bits of wood in, in their yards. Think about scooping some of those things up. Like these are some of the things that luckily we just so happen to do naturally um, where, 
you know, we keep the wood that we have uh, from, you know, shaving the hedges. So we were able to burn that. We had some boards uh, come off of our fence. They're old boards. So, so we put those old uh, fencing boards in our garage. And as a result of that, we have wood that we can now burn. Um, also, like a few years ago, I actually... Um, I, I bought like two space heaters and I just bought them and never really thought I'd, I'd need them. They were like super cheap, like 25 bucks a piece. And right now it's the space heaters that I bought like two or three years ago that's helping to keep us warm. So you really have to think um, like uh, you, you just have to think ahead. So I, I just want to thank all of you who hopped on for a second uh, to join the live and um, just know that, you know, obviously they're going to say what they're going to say on the news. It's a little bit more planned and controlled. And a lot of people are really more upset with the uh, electricity companies. And people are act actually talking about after this thing clears up, doing a, a class action lawsuit and really starting uh, the process of holding people accountable. You have so many people who are without uh, any type of power. So yes, I am freezing. I'm, I'm still hanging in there. Um, but again, this is how I go to sleep and this is how I wake up. I mean, at this particular point in time, you know, it's really difficult for us to, um, you know, even deal with our water because, you know, we don't want the pipes to burst. Um, so you, it's just so many things we have to become more educated on as as a people but I want to thank you guys and I'm gonna go ahead and end this call because I'm sorry in this live because I know the power is about to go out and I gotta grab something uh, to eat real quick so um, yes Tiffany oh you said I could stay, stay with you in Oakland I wish I was in Oakland <laughs> yes I have to charge my battery it's like the minute the the power comes on everybody starts running to to the kitchen and to make some food really quick to charge phones because you don't know how long you're gonna have power for um, but thank you guys um, yes yes uh, there will be a class to action lawsuit I'm I'm certain of it Mala um, yeah the fast food lines are off the hook Yes. Oh, yes, we do have water. Uh, we always keep a, a, a ton of water. <laughs> so, yes, we thankfully we have water uh, uh, here. Um, we have bottled water as well. Um, we, we have we have the basics. Um, one of the things I, I always keep on hand, too, for food, just in case all else fails and we get desperate, we have uh, some canned goods like like beans uh, and we have rice. We probably can't really cook the um, the beans as good as we'd like to, but we do have like a little uh, a little uh, device that helps us to boil water when we do have electricity. So in terms of if we need to make rice, we have big bags of rice and all of that. So I just wanted to to share share the reality of what's happening and also encourage brothers and sisters out there, whoever. Um, you should be um, who, wherever you should should be located. You please start thinking ahead. Um, please start, you know, slowly but surely stockpiling little things. And make sure. I feel like every home should have rice, <laughs> something basic that takes little to no effort. Um, I got by. Um, I've been getting by on. Luckily, I had avocados. I had. Um, we have rice. I also have oatmeal. Um, you know, it's just, uh, it, it's just like the basics. You don't need a lot of, a lot of anything, just the basics to keep your belly full and sustained. So, um, yes, camping gear is, is great too. I agree with that. I totally agree. Um, so yes, you stay safe as well, uh, in Houston, uh, ladies and gentlemen, if you're in Texas, my prayers and thoughts are with you. I'm in it with you as well uh, stay safe um, and, and no matter where you are because the weather is tricky all over the country um, but the reality is is that no matter what you know we're dealing with big corporations who have the ability to flip a switch and change and affect and impact people's lives so be thoughtful of that I'm gonna go and thank you guys for joining and I'll talk to you soon